Hey what's up you guys welcome back to my channel if you're new here hi hello I'm Lydia and today I thought we could do a video where I talk about my self-harm history. Now I am over a year free from self-harm which is a huge achievement this is how I'm doing that recovery which is amazing. <laughs> Right, for sure. But self harm isn't something I think about on a daily basis anymore. Since stopping self harming, I've taken to a lot of new things. I've put myself right out there on YouTube. So I started self harming when I was around seven years old, and I'd do it over my heart, and I did it on the back of my hand. Did my family know about it? Yeah, they did. They told me to stop doing it, which very helpful advice. But when you're traumatised by things in your childhood, you turn to coping mechanisms. And self-harm was what I chose as my coping mechanism. I self-harmed from the age of 7 to the age of 25. I'm 26 now. God, I'm getting old. <laughs> I've been doing YouTube since I was 12. Not on this channel. I had another channel. And I'm not going to say the name of the channel because it's fucking embarrassing. My hair was so frizzy as well. So yeah, I just, just let's not go there. But in terms of self harm recovery, I had a friend in school who was really public about her self-harm with me and honestly it made me feel I had to compete against her. So I didn't shave, my mum didn't let me shave because of the blades. I had to use hair removal cream to remove body hair. Now I have a razor. A pretty cool shaver as well actually. It's electric. It's really quick, it does my legs so quickly and my arms so quickly. Ooh, it's very quick and painless and it doesn't cut you. RIP my bank account. But anyway, back on the story. I didn't I, I learnt how to take pencil sharpeners apart with a hair grip. So I used that to self art that's when I started on my arm. So far I've just covered up the serious ones with tattoos. Now Self-harm for me was a coping mechanism. Even when I was in the hospital, it was a coping mechanism. I remember when I, when I was sectioned four years ago, and I was on one-to-one -one for the entire 28 days that I was there. I got discharged on the day of my section ends, still on one-to-one, -one, still on fucking four to six drinks because I wasn't eating. And it just... While I was in that admission, I myself hung up worse. I managed to smuggle in a Stanley blade, and those things are sharp. And that's when I did most the most damage. And to be very honest, it was traumatizing. Going through self harm is is a traumatic thing, but. When you do it deep and it's hard to really understand what I mean. When it's deep and serious, all self harm is serious. When it's when you have to go to A and E for the stitches, I get flashbacks now of times I've self harmed. The one that I keep getting at the minute is when I was living with my grandparents because me and my mum were... My mum basically kicked me out. So I stayed at my grandparents and I took one of the knives and I hid it in the bathroom. Had my bathroom. And then one of the girls that was bullying me texted my mum saying that I sell harm. I mean she knew, she knew what I did anyway. Like, she's my mom. 
she phoned my mum and phoned my grandparents and my grandparents came running up the stairs, told me to show them my arms, which they knew I self-armed, but that was fucking horrible. Because I, I used to cover up all my scars all the time because I didn't want people to judge me. Now I, uh, I don't care about it as much anymore. I think that just comes with age. You just you just stop caring about what people think. Because I used to be so afraid to stand up and talk in front of a class. Now I just don't give a shit. I just do it. And it's not like I also have healed from my anxiety issues a bit. I'm still medicated for anxiety, but I I just don't give a shit anymore. Show my scars. People ask questions. People point them out. So I covered them with tattoos. Does that draw attention to it? Yep. Because I've got a colourful tattoo on this arm. This arm it doesn't get pointed out as much because it's not as bad. And I'll say this, I, I have one bad arm for scars and then I have one good arm for scars. I'm right-handed. Well, I'm, I'm pedestrious. I, think I write with both hands. I mainly write with my right hand, though. The handwriting is not good. <laughs> if you ever get a handwritten note off me, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, just sorry. But I, I used to self-harm on my right arm, left arm. Same thing. And I don't know, it just kind of. Well, it was because I used my right hand. So I've got a one bad arm, and this arm's like not too bad. Really, it's got the tattoo. I've got a tattoo with this arm. Story about this, this tattoo here. I thought it was going to be bigger because I was paying £140 for it. I thought it would cover the scars there, but it didn't. <laughs> so now I'm trying to think what I can do to cover them scars. I'm thinking about asking me if they can put another butterfly on, but I don't know if they will. So harm's not something that it's easy to go through, it's not easy to stop. I stopped because I went in patient last year. But honestly, the idea of self-harming doesn't really come to me anymore. It's not something I desire to do. It's not something I need to cope anymore. Because I am genuinely in a better place. And I wish I could tell you how I did it and how I managed to get to where I'm at, but I don't know what I did. Things just start to improve and I guess that's life. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions or stories you want to tell, comments are open. Let's hope this video doesn't get struck down. <laughs> that's all I've got for this video. Stay safe, stay sober and stay strong. Peace.